That's right, our good buddy Drew Monson, AKA My Toe Cold, is back in a video discussing why he hates men. And there's a lot, a lot that we can all learn from this. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take a look at what's going on in the YouTube community, try to see what lessons we can learn from them. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you're on social media, so am I baby, go follow me over on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul because I love engaging with all of you, tweeting back and forth. Uh, my DMs are open, so if you have any questions or video suggestions, feel free to hit me up, all right? But yeah, it's been a little while since Drew Monson has posted a video and he just came back with a video titled, Why I Hate Men. First off, first and foremost, I don't think I'm the only one who noticed this, but Drew, you lost some weight, baby. You looking good. Like, did anybody else notice that? Let me know down in the comments below. All right, but anyways, uh, yeah, there's a few topics that I wanted to dive into and kind of unpack um, from his video. But the first one, the first one is, and it's kind of ridiculous during Pride Month, but anyways, here's a clip of Drew explaining it. My beers, my women, beers that are so big, you forget who you even are. Anyway, I'm walking down the street the other day and this car drives by me and it's a group of guys and of course the first thought I have is, oh my god, it's a bunch of bros, maybe I can go to the brewery with them and get a giant beer. But no, turns out they wanted to be enemies because one of the guys stuck his head out the window, yelled at me, literally, this is exactly what he said, learn how to walk straight, you fa- I'm not gonna say the word, but it's the one people use against gay people. So, yeah, like there is just no room for hate speech. I just do not understand it. Like, rule number one, ladies and gentlemen, don't be a dick, all right? Like, I am just, I'm trying to figure out. Like, I, I'm reading a book on empathy and I'm always trying to be empathetic. I'm always trying to put myself in another person's shoes and understand. I'm trying to understand what kind of mindset a person could get into where the way somebody like Drew was walking angered them so much that they felt like they had to scream this out at him. Like, who hurt this man? What happened to this man that made him want to scream such a ridiculous, terrible thing at another human being? I don't get it, I might never get it, but I think it's important to realize like this kind of stuff is not okay. And it almost it almost feels like, and like, I, I just, I can't even imagine being LGBTQ during Pride Month because it feels like during Pride Month, there's even more homophobia. You know what I mean? And that is just insane and it's awful. What else is crazy about what these people screamed at Drew is obviously there's the whole situation going on with Steven Crowder and Carlos Maza, right? And Steven Crowder's defense of his shirt is that it says it, socialism is for figs, right? Like, I just want you guys to play this game real quick because this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard anybody say. So when people are defending Steven Crowder and his shirt, like imagine if these these guys screamed at Drew Monson, walk in a straight line, you fig. Like, the connotation is there. They're, they're trying to say the thing without saying the thing. You know what I mean? Like, we know what you're trying to say. Like, it's almost like, as somebody who's half black, there's some, there's some weirdness around, like, when somebody says, like, N-word. Like, if somebody just came up to me as a half black man and called me an N-word, not the word, but the N-word, right? I'd, I'd still be offended, you know? So I just think that whole argument about the figs thing is absolutely ridiculous. My beers, my women, beers that are so big, you forget who you even are. Anyway, I'm walking down the street the other day and this car drives by me and it's a group of guys and of course the first thought I have is, oh my God, it's a bunch of bros, maybe I can go to the brewery with them and get a giant beer. But no, turns out they wanted to be enemies because one of the guys stuck his head out the window, yelled at me, literally, this is exactly what he said, Learn how to walk straight, you fa- I'm not gonna say the word, but it's the one people use against gay people. It's- Now, I think this is something great that we can all learn from Drew Monson. Now, as somebody who has a lot of emotions and I, I have a thick skin, like, I get it, like, turning this into a joke and, like, I, I get that it's, 
it's good to laugh about these situations. Like sometimes when somebody says something so hateful, like there's nothing else to do but just laugh at it. Trust me, like when I'm going through my comment section, sometimes I am just LOLing all day long, right? And we have to be able to joke about it. We have to be able to like make fun of it because it is so ridiculous. But at the end of the day, like, I don't know, like I don't know Drew Monson, obviously, but there is some pain that comes with it. Like people say all sorts of things to me in my comments. A lot of it has to do with my weight and things like that. And like, yeah, it somewhat hurts, but it's something that I, I acknowledge is going to happen, especially because I'm on a public platform. So if there's anything you take away from Drew Monson making this video, is learn that it's okay to laugh about it and joke about it. Like for some people, some people like myself, some people like Drew, like this is a coping skill that we use. And it's something that I've talked to my therapist about. Like we all have coping skills, right? Then there's healthy and unhealthy coping skills. And this, like I've talked to like with my therapist, like do you think that's unhealthy to laugh about these things? And she's like, no, that's how you deal with it. Just as long as you're processing like through it if it is like affecting your day-to-day -day life. You know what I mean? Besides that, it's also just that weird like masculine thing I'm not comfortable with because it always feels like they're putting it on. Like it's like that's not a real personality when like a guy never shows any real feelings and all they say is like, yeah. Uh, and they like have that walk and they're like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Right there, right there. That is one of the main reasons I decided to make this video because it's true, like it's very true. And this is something that is getting better in some ways and not, which is men being able to open up about their feelings, open up about their emotions. Like I can tell you this, I was raised not talking about my emotions. So when I got to high school and depression was hitting me, anxiety was hitting me later on, with, uh, it led to my drug addiction and alcoholism. Like, I just didn't talk about my emotions because we didn't do that in my house because it's not the way my father was raised, so it's not the way that he raised me, right? And the other thing was, I was like a jock in high school as well. I was on the football team, the wrestling team, the track team, and like locker room talk isn't like, yo bro, I'm feeling super sad today. Like, we just didn't do that. So the thing is, it's something I try to do with my channel, is advocate for like people being able to open up and discuss their feelings. What's interesting is like throughout my life as I got older too, I mainly had female friends and it might be because it was easier to open up to them or even like my gay friends, like it was easier to open up to them about my feelings, about my emotions because there is sort of still a stigma around men opening up about their feelings and emotions because you're not manly enough, you know what I mean? Like, you shouldn't be talking about this, just man up, just deal with it. And if any guys out there are watching this video, like just know you can open up about this stuff. Like something that's just amazing is when I see like groups of men, like in support groups where they talk about this, like I worked at a drug and alcohol treatment center and seeing like the most badass dudes I've ever met in my life, being able to open up about their feelings. Like I'm talking about ex Navy SEALs, firefighters, policemen, other veterans, EMTs, like some bad ass dudes being able to open up and discuss these things. Because you know what they say, baby girl, in order to heal, you gotta feel. So in this last section of the video, I just wanna talk about a few things that Drew Monson touched on. I love Drew, I absolutely adore Drew, but I'm trying to take what you guys are already watching and try to teach you some lessons that I've learned in my life and sometimes I've had to help others with these lessons as well. So one of them is when Drew says this. It's kind of been all over the place. I hope you liked it. I haven't made one for a little, I don't even, I can't just keep giving excuses. Like, I guess this is just how I make videos. I really want to get consistent with it, but it's hard because I really feel a lot of pressure. Like sometimes I wish I was like an alcoholic because I think drinking, I've never done it before, but I think it would make me like more comfortable because I can't make a video without thinking like, oh my God, even like 10 people seeing this, it freaks me out. What if one of them doesn't like trust me i get it i get it he was joking i get it but as somebody who is a recovering alcoholic i would be remiss in my responsibilities if i did not just talk about it real quick this is one of the main reasons why people drink or use drugs i'm somebody who used to have crippling social anxiety like a lot of people who meet me now have no idea how bad my social anxiety used to be 
But when I found alcohol, it got rid of all that stuff. So when Drew's talking about like why he doesn't upload that much and get on camera and everything, and you know, hey, you know, maybe if I drink and everything like that, like that can be dangerous. The reason being just the way dependence work is that we start to train our brain to whenever we're going into a social setting, because a lot of you out there are not YouTubers, but what that could be for you is every time you're going out to a bar or you're going to like a work party or a regular party or whatever it is, you might train yourself to drink in order to talk to people. And for somebody like me, somebody who has addiction that runs in my family, like this can be dangerous because the way my addiction began to progress was I needed it to function in any setting. I started needing to drink at work, right? I needed to start drinking just to go to the grocery store and interact with like the cashier and all of those things. So I know Drew was joking, but just to like put that out there, it can be dangerous if you start to use alcohol for your social anxiety. I'm sorry I'm trying to sell you stuff. I'm just trying, I just need money. I'm trying to get rich again. I used to have like tens of thousands of dollars. Now I have like a few hundred, sometimes a thousand dollars. But honestly, I act rich when I'm not even rich. Like I think I've said this before, but if I have over like $400, I just stop looking at price tags. Like I just turn into Kanye West. Now, the last thing I wanna touch on real quick is I think a lot of you might be able to relate to what Drew was talking about just in regards to money. So something that I do as a, a YouTube creator, as somebody who just looks at, you know, society and human behavior and everything like that, I see people like Drew Monson or even uh, Garrett Watts, obviously they're friends and everything, and like these, these guys, they have like a ton, a ton of fans, huge fans, right? And when I hear them talk about money problems, I'm like, man, like you just gotta get up and go to work. And I know it's not that simple, but this is where like therapy helps me. This is where my antidepressants help me. They get me to that baseline where I can get up and support myself. And you know, I also have a son, so I gotta support him as well. But I think a lot of you might be able to relate to that as well. And this is why taking care of your mental health is so, so, so important. Like, there are instances where people get like disability for their depression or their trauma, but we are not at a place in the American healthcare system where this is something that happens to a lot of people, where a lot of people get benefits when they're not working. For example, when I first got sober seven years ago, I was pending disability for almost a year, and then I got denied because during that year, I started to get better, all right? So if you realize that your mental health is affecting your work, if it's affecting your ability to get work, if it's affecting your ability to make money to support yourself, like, because this all just progresses the illness even more and it will make you even more depressed by not being productive, by not being able to provide with yourself, which then leads to anxiety, like how am I gonna pay my bills? How am I gonna put food on the table and all these other things? Like, please, please, please go out there and get help. Like, as of right now, if you're 26 years old or younger, you can still be covered under your parents' medical insurance. So you could probably get therapy, all right? But if you're somebody who does have insurance, just talk with a doctor, talk to your insurance company, see if they can recommend a therapist for you. If you would like to use some affordable online therapy, I personally use BetterHelp Online Therapy and I'm an affiliate of them. So if you would like, there's a link down in the description below. What that does is you get cheap online affordable therapy and a little bit goes back to help the channel as well. But if your depression, your anxiety is affecting your life and your ability to function and provide yourself, like there's no, no, no shame in asking for help, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And if you would like to help support what I'm doing here, click or tap on that Patreon icon right there, all right? Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.